and out there working on, on this stuff on a daily basis, but she's also been doing interviews like this, and hopefully you can see that says USA Today. She's been interviewed nationally and internationally on the falsehoods that are coming out of the subway. So we're getting the news out that while La Brea is wonderful and spectacular, we're augmenting the story that can be told here. We're augmenting it with many of the same animals and a few new additions to some of the animals that you find here, but basically recreating what this environment would have been like and hopefully putting a little bit more of a constraint on what the actual abundance of animals was here. There were more elephants like Hayden, re restored here by Brian and than you might have otherwise interpreted. So we're just finding things out. We're still at the very early stages of this. And then eventually, when we finish all of these fossils, we'll go to the Natural History Museum and recreate what we interpret the ancient ice ages to have been here. All as a result of paleontological mitigation and the richness of the ground below your feet. So next time you are out and about, think about what's below your feet. Not just in asphalt deposits, but all around you here in Southern California. And with that, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, It's the source of constant disappointment. In Southern, Cal cry. in Southern California? No, Southern California is great. It's just this project, the Purple Line Extension, they're relatively rare. Do you have but any idea as to why? I think our monitors don't like it. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, paleontology is the luck of the drop. It really is, which again is why when you find big samples, it makes you happy. Something like Diamond Valley Lake, where you've got over 100,000 fossils, and now those numbers start to mean something. If I've only got 100 or 200 fossils, those are very light numbers. And so any statistical significance is going to be very suspect. That's why Sherry and John work down at the Natural History Museum supplementing what they do um, by comparing uh, our assemblage with assemblages that have been collected over the past century. Thank you. Wow, that was it? You guys are easy. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I was wondering if the Possum um, group, um, if the rare fossils and any fossils really that are found in areas that are um, not too bad for DNA preservation, if you work with someone like um, Jack Shapiro at UC Santa Cruz or at um, um, McMaster's in Canada to careful nuclear genome for something like these things. I have worked with Beth Shapiro on a couple of different projects. We actually just named a new genus of horse back in November of last year, a new genus of Pleistocene horse. Um, but my participation in that was based on fossils coming out of a cave in Nevada called Jimmy Cave. And the horses in that cave are mummified. So we mm -hmm. the bones and they've got ligaments and tendons and skin still on them because they've been sitting around for 13,000 years, but because it's hot and dry in Nevada, they're preserved. And so they did have DNA and the stuff we're finding. I don't know about that bison. That bison skull has been really kind of intrigued. I would love to try drilling a hole in it and see if we get into DNA. But uh, most of the fossils we find here are probably not going to have DNA. The organic material is probably not going to be preserved. Um, it's worth a shot, but no, there's other places throughout California where you need to you need you need really specific kinds of preservation. Um, and most of what we find in California, you don't have that kind of preservation. You should have it here at the tar pits because this is actual bone preserved here. It's not mineralized. It's not liquefied. But because of the asphalt saturation, because of the chemicals that are necessary to get that asphalt out of it, that destroys the potential, at least so far, for getting any. Uh, big chains of DNA that you can use for that sort of reconstruction. Other fossils from Southern California are almost always mineralized to some extent. They've lost the organic content to some extent. And so they just aren't useful for that. Uh, Gypsum Cave in Nevada, the stuff was mummified. And most of the fossils that are yielding DNA now are from up north, from areas where you have stuff in permafrost. So these are fossils that have been frozen since the end of the ice age. 
Um, there's a cave in Wyoming called Natural Trap Cave, where it's a hole in the ground. And you can imagine, again, the horrors of paleontology. You can imagine these horses and other animals leaping about, smiling, and it's all flowers and rainbows and everything, and then they come upon this hole, and they plummet 86 feet down for their death. And that happened through thousands of years, just animals constantly falling into the sea. So now there's this great big pile of fossils at the bottom of this hole. It's natural trap cave. That's the trap part. <laughs> and if you go there, because they, they just reopened it like two years ago, three years ago, they just reopened it. And a uh, lady who's been working here, Julie Meachin, mm -hmm. Dr. Professor Julie Meachin from University of Iowa. Not only is she working here studying animals from here, but she reopened Natural Trap Cave. Mm -hmm. And you can go out there in the summer, and it's 95 degrees outside, which is awful. And then you rappel down into the cave, and it's 35 degrees at the bottom of the cave. Mm -hmm. The ice age has never went away at the bottom of that cave. And all of those fossils are still original bone. They got no asphalt in them, so you don't have to use any of those chemicals. So those fossils are also producing DNA. It's a nice little pocket of the ice age is preserved in a cave in Wyoming. So that's really cool. But that's what you need is those special circumstances where the original organic content of those bone is preserved. And it's Natural Trap Cave, Gibson Cave, the permafrost up in Alaska and the Yukon. And that's about it. There's a few other caves in the American Southwest where they have also got DNA. Same thing, those bones have been mummified. So they haven't turned to stone, they haven't petrified or mineralized or lithified or anything like that. But most of the stuff we find here in Southern California, most of the stuff we find on, on mitigation projects is mineralized. And so that organic, organic content is not preserved. I read they were able to get from a warm climate um, in the full genome of a uh, straight cut cell. Very cool. I'd be interested to know more about that. Yeah. Yes. Is there a place that is 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 that is
Yeah, he was amazing. He was a he was a sweetheart too. He was he was a very very nice gentleman. Um, and I don't know if it's still true, but for a while he had found more remains of Tyrannosaurus than any other human being ever. Um, I think he found four different Tyrannosaurus rexes. <laughs> Rex I don't know. But he yeah, four individuals, which is a lot. Um, they're all popular now, everybody finds them. They're like the gateway dinosaur. But um, <laughs> anyway, but at, 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 at the time he was remarkably successful. Yes. You need to teach a course down here, like in Los Angeles. Do you? <laughs> You mean like to you guys or? No, <laughs> like, just like some venue at some institution down here so that I can go. So I can go. <laughs> um, I would love to because I love teaching, but that is one heck of a community. Maybe when the subway is open. <laughs> I really can't wait. It's, it's years down the road, but I'm really serious. This Take my little motor scooter over to the Rialto train station, <laughs> sleep on the way to Union Station, wake up, stagger over to the Purple Lamp, <laughs> off to La Brea, have a little buzzer that goes off, come in here, hang out, study fossils, maybe have a margarita afterwards. <laughs> who knows? Because you, know, you don't want to do that if you're driving home, but if you're taking the train, who cares? <laughs> I'll take another. Not that, don't do this, kids. Don't, don't listen to me. I'm sure that never ever happens. But the point being, that subway when it's finished will make things remarkably easy for people out where I live, which today, with no traffic at all, is still an hour away. In normal weekday traffic, it's two or three hours. It's a horrible drive. I love coming here, but it's a horrible drive. With the subway, it'll be fantastic. Until the earthquake, but never mind. That's true. <laughs> Thank you all very much.